Well, this is MX Linux, and there are a number of things that make it so very interesting. First, let us talk about the desktop. It has a very simple con key in the right part, and it uses a panel which is present at the left part. I guess it makes much more sense because if you open file manager or the browser, you will see that most of the things are located at the top left corner. For example, if you want to go back to the home folder or go to the parent directory, you have to click the options that are present in the top left corner. Similarly, in Firefox, you have the refresh button, you have the forward or the backward button all present in the top left part. If you want to quickly switch between applications, it is more it does make more sense to have the icons present at the top left corner. That is not the end. They also provide you the option for changing it. Because obviously it is XFCE, you can go to panel preferences and you can choose something like this, horizontal. You can unlock the panel, you can move it to the bottom part. Now it acts like a taskbar. You can change the position of the items from here. For example, this is whisker menu. If you want to move it to the first part, you can do this and it will move here. You have a completely different layout. Let's choose to move the action buttons to the last part for logging out and for the date and time let's have it right after the status tray okay before this then we have the separator and finally the applications from display now we can lock the panel finally and this is how it will appear you have the option to change it from dark mode to light mode whatever you feel like you can change the opacity levels also now all of these might be very difficult for someone who is new to linux or even to xfce mx linux makes it easier with MX Tweaks, present inside the settings application of XFC itself. From MX Tweak, you can directly change the position of the panel at the bottom or move it to the top. You can also change the location to the left as a vertical bar or towards the right as another vertical bar. If you mess up with the settings, you can directly reset from here itself. Also, it provides a number of themes that can be changed from here. But more on that later. Now let us talk about performance. So if I open file manager or if I open Firefox, you will see that everything opens up instantly. The fact that this is running from a pen drive says much about this operating system. Running it inside a VM, MX chooses the correct resolution automatically when resizing the application. On other distros, I need to install OpenVM tools to achieve this or manually set the resolution from settings under display. Here is the Geekbench score of MX Linux on bare metal compared to Windows 11 on the same system. It also uses minimal resources, minimal amount of RAM and CPU even in the live demo. This distro also manages to boot up in less than 20 seconds while booting from an USB. Now let us talk about the desktop. There aren't any unnecessary folders provided, for example, home folder or uh, the trash. Trash is not there. Trash was there in Linux FX, which I recently reviewed. Anyway, you can go and check out the video from there. So uh, trash or uh, the home folder or other folders are not there on the desktop. You have three icons that are provided by default. I guess after installation, uh, the installer will be not there, but you can definitely get rid of them by pressing the delete button. If you want some folders appearing there or icons appearing there, you can definitely get into desktop settings from here, icons and choose the icons you want to show on your desktop. Home will show home. The file system will show the file system. Then we have trash and removable devices also. Now let us dive into the applications that are provided. First of all, I would like to talk about MX tools. There are a number of applications provided by MX Linux itself. One of them is NVIDIA driver installer. And this makes installation of NVIDIA drivers so very simple. Even I had installed NVIDIA drivers. This laptop itself has NVIDIA and it works seamlessly to install the correct driver for your system. It will do the updates on its own. And let me just show you. So if you enter the password, which is basically demo. Enter. And that's all required for installing the NVIDIA drivers. Not just that, you also have the MX boot repair, which helps you to reinstall grub bootloader, repair grub config, make a backup or restore from a backup. It comes with a live USB maker, live USB kernel updater, remaster CC and more. One of the interesting tools for me is the Codex installer. Often we are not able to play certain videos. It helps you download the Codex and help you play the video on a device. There is another option that is Conkey. From here, you can open the Conkey manager. 
which has a number of con key installed with it. There are so many con keys that are there. You click on a con key, it will show up here how it will look like. And if you don't want the con key that is currently enabled, you can click here and disable the con key altogether. Now there are some more various options, different combinations of this con key. So for example, this one, or you can go for this one or this one which uses the roboto font then we have this this so a number of con keys are installed and can be used directly from here another thing here is the themes now if you enable the theme it changes the wallpaper and changes the con key so i don't specifically like that that theme uh, anyway that can also be done if we close this again it will open up you go for cleanup let's enter the password it does a disk cleanup for you and also launches the disk usage analyzer from here. Hence, a number of handy tools are provided with MX Tools, which can again be accessed from the Whisker menu itself. And some of the other applications that are included out of the box include LibreOffice. For graphics, you have GThumb, Last Paint, and LibreOffice Draw, and Document Scanner 2. For games, well, games, yeah. For developments, you have Icon Browser which is for inspecting gtk icon themes and a fast and lightweight ide using gtk plus just like a text editor or an ide for building your project files now the default desktop does not look great you have a number of wallpapers you just click and it changes and applies instantly and there is also a dull version of the same wallpaper which can be used with the dark mode and then you have a range of other wallpapers you can click and apply one of them according to your choice and taste and for the themes, it uses MX Comfort by default with the Papyrus MX Blue Dark Paints icons. You can change them to anything else. For example, there is Gnome, there is Tango, Papyrus Light, Papyrus Dark, Numix, Numix Light. A number of options are there. And for MX Comfort Dark, you have the dark version of the theme using somewhat the Nord color palette, if I'm not wrong. Then you have the Arc theme. Arc Dark, Arc Darker, Arc Lighter. So you can choose them from there. Then you have the Blackbird, you have Default, Emacs, and more options from here. And you can install more themes just by saving them in the dot themes directory of your home folder. But you can also choose a theme set from here. For example, you have the Greybird Dark theme, which will so choose their own um, Greybird Dark MX theme with the Window Manager theme and the icons accordingly. You have the MX Dark also available, which again will choose their own options with the icons. That will go with the theme. You have Numix themes and icons also. You have the preview option for previewing how it will look like and applying will apply the theme on your desktop. Let us go with MX Dark because the dark mode looks good. For the compositor, you can choose the XFWM compositor or you can manually switch to Compton. Now you can go for Compton settings. From here you can set the opacity, fade, other options and also the shadow. You can also edit the Compton configuration file directly from here itself. Then you have the display option which has the option for hardware backlight and the software back backlight. I don't know how this works but this makes the system look very weird. I guess the brightness increases. It's more like the intensity increasing but I prefer to keep it, keep it at 100 obviously um, but that option exists. For hardware backlight, it increases or decreases the brightness of the display itself. Config options it is there and uh, you have other options also for resetting anything you have changed. There is also an ad block which is provided. Many advertising servers and websites will not be able to connect to this PC. You can choose one service or combine multiple services for more advert protection. You can choose the services which you want to prefer for blocking. Then you have the light DM plus GTK greeter settings, which is there inside the XFC settings itself. Uh, okay, let's get back to settings again. And you also have direct access to MX tools. Finally, MX system sound provides you the option to modify the default sound theme. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.